Here's your news for January 6, 2020. We're starting off today with news from New Japan Pro Wrestling as Chris Jericho defeated Tanahashi at Wrestle Kingdom 14. Though the idea of a working relationship between AEW and New Japan seems to be off the table once again, Jericho said it doesn't have to be, as Tanahashi gave him a great match at the event. During Wrestling Observer Radio, Jim Valley said that Jericho revealed his injuries during a post-show press conference, saying, Jericho came into the press conference and said his jaw was dislocated, Jericho's jaw. He also said that his knee is swollen and that he's going to have it looked at. He thought that some of the dragon screws did that, according to Jericho. Of course, this being Jericho, it's hard to tell whether the AEW World Champion was being serious or not, and fans will have to see what the Inner Circle leader has to say during this week's edition of Dynamite. More news from Jericho now as the AEW star certainly has had a busy week, but did find time to speak to Sports Illustrated. In the interview, Jericho spoke about what his career would have been like if he never left WWE, and speculated that the list would still be a thing, but stale. Jericho also said how he needs to keep reinventing himself and gave DX as an example of clinging to the past when he said, I have a great list of hits, but a lot of those will never be played again because I'm too busy concentrating on new hits and performing at the highest level. It's hard to leave all the old gimmicks and catchphrases and take a chance, but if you don't do that, it's like DX coming to the ring in 2019 and yelling suck it. It looks like a relic from the past, and I never wanted to be that. Throughout his career, Jericho has been able to reinvent himself time and time again, and it's highly likely that fans haven't seen the final incarnation of Y2J. One thing we can count on, though, is that fans shouldn't expect Jericho to be doing the same things he's currently doing 20 years from now. Over to Raw now, and last week's show saw the return of Liv Morgan, who proclaimed her love for Lana during the Ravishing Russian's wedding to Bobby Lashley. Though some fans aren't thrilled how homosexuality is being portrayed and Sonya Deville, the company's first openly lesbian performer, and her tag team Mandy Rose aren't pleased that an idea they pitched is being used for someone else, the WWE is focused on continuing the angle. Since last week's bombshell reveal, Morgan has been dropping evidence of a relationship between the two, including a photo of her and Lana about to kiss, as well as videos of car rides showing the two having fun together. These posts aren't new, but when released in this context, these pictures and videos only add to this angle. Hopefully fans will get a better understanding of what is happening tonight as Raw prepares to host its first show of the 2020s, as well as the first edition of the long-running show since the wedding. One person who was involved in the wedding last week was Rusev, and though the Bulgarian brute didn't actually do much during the segment, he's still happy with how things went down. After jumping out of an oversized cake on Raw, the former US champion spoke on the Jerry Lawler show and revealed his thoughts on the angle concerning his real-life wife. He said, People hate it, people love it, but the power of social media. Now it's almost like, I want to be a cool guy and cheer against WWE. You could put the greatest segment in history, but there will be this 3% of people that are going to go ahead and bash it. And hey, you have your right. Go ahead and express it. I'm not going to judge you for it. There's some people that want to see three hours of power bombs, and hey, kudos to you. If that's what you're into, go ahead and find what works for you. But we're a broad company. We're entertainment. It's not about power bombs. It's not about arm drags. It's about entertaining millions and millions of people week in and week out. Rusev isn't wrong when he says that there are some fans who will hate whatever WWE produces no matter what, and he's also correct in saying that pro wrestling is for everyone. While some fans might not love every segment, but that's why WWE caters to different fans, and based on the viewing figures for the wedding both on TV and on YouTube, it's clear that the Lashley-Lana ceremony drew enough attention for WWE to consider it a win. One person who wasn't a fan of the wedding though was CM Punk, as the straight-edge superstar continues to be honest with his opinions since returning to the WWE scene in October last year. After leaving WWE following the January 2014 Royal Rumble, Punk missed out on appearing at that year's WrestleMania 30, but this week showed what the original match card for the show was meant to be. 
From a document dated January 21, 2014, the original plan was for Punk to wrestle Triple H in New Orleans, but after his departure, Bryan replaced the Chicago-made star as the game's opponent before going on to win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship later that night. In the main event, Batista was supposed to face then-champion Randy Orton for the title, and this obviously puts any rumors to bed that the WWE was planning a Bryan title victory well in advance. Interestingly, United States champion Dean Ambrose was supposed to defend the gold against his fellow Shield brother Roman Reigns, despite the group being together at the time. What's even more interesting is that there is no mention of Seth Rollins, who would break the group up in May that year, as the Shield would go on to squash the New Age Outlaws and Kane in New Orleans. Though Punk obviously didn't appear at WrestleMania 30, the Straight Edge Superstar will be back on the January 21st edition of WWE Backstage, while Paige has been announced for next week's show. Back to Raw now, and with tonight's show being the first episode of the Red Brand for the new year, the WWE is looking to make tonight's three-hour event in Oklahoma City's Chesapeake Energy Arena a night to remember. According to the venue's website, Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch will team up to face the Kabuki Warriors, though it hasn't been stated if this match will be for the WWE Women's Tag Team titles. In addition, Kevin Owens is also advertised to be in action against Seth Rollins, and we presume the AOP will be at ringside to watch the Architect in action. Either of these matches could end up being dark matches for the live crowd, and time will tell whether fans watching at home get to see these advertised contests. One superstar fans should expect to see is Randy Orton, after the Viper's faked injury paid off last week when he fooled AJ Styles. In Orton's speech about his alleged injury, the former WWE World Champion brought up Edge, and with WWE promos being scripted very carefully, Brad Shepard is reporting that bringing up Edge was no accident at all. After retiring due to injuries in 2011, the Rated R superstar has consistently said that he will never wrestle again but that hasn't stopped speculation that he will have one last match in the not-so-distant future. Even out of the ring, Edge's career has been able to entertain fans, as the former world champion has now become a popular meme in the IWC, where different scenes from movies and TVs with smoke in them are meshed with the Rated R Superstar's entrance. Only time will tell if fans will soon have more footage of his famous entrances to use in video mashups, as fans still hold out hope to see the Canadian lace up his boots one more time. Over to AEW now, and recently the company announced a date in the New York, New Jersey area for 2020, but not the place many fans expected them to go. Previously, the company's president, Tony Khan, stated that he had eyes on AEW inside Madison Square Garden, but it seems like the WWE have been able to keep the competition out of the world's most famous arena. During Wrestling Observer Radio, the hosts discussed the interesting fact that New Japan didn't announce any American dates for 2020, not even at MSG, leading Dave Meltzer to say, Here's the deal. So Madison Square Garden had been pushing for other companies to come in, you know, AAA. They pushed for Ring of Honor to come in with New Japan. Then all of a sudden, WWE tried to get it blocked, and at one point they did get it blocked, but the Sinclair lawyers got it unblocked. They had a first day sellout, which makes the story even funnier, because what happened was that the WWE booked the Raw and SmackDown in Madison Square Garden. Raw did 12,000 people and they had high ticket prices too, but SmackDown did like 7,000 people, which is really not good for Madison Square Garden at all. Then after that, I had kind of heard from a couple of people that AEW wanted to work Madison Square Garden, and then they announced the Prudential Center in Newark. Cody even went and said politics and blah blah blah, but I knew that they wanted Madison Square Garden. Meltzer continued to speak about how during the AAA press conference to announce their event at the Garden, WWE kept coming up, and the Observer journalists said that WWE can be a promotion's best friend or worst enemy, but they don't want anyone else inside their hallowed stadium. Now though, it seems that Madison Square Garden has a new philosophy after AAA didn't sell well, and there was also lackluster sales for Raw and SmackDown. Meltzer said, What I've heard is Madison Square Garden's mentality is WWE is number one, and if they can't draw here big, then what hope does anyone else have? Even though New Japan and Ring of Honor sold out the first day, I was told that it'll make it much more difficult today than it was six months ago when Madison Square Garden was open to anyone who wanted to book that building. It should be noted that Wednesdays are often booked by other sports inside the Garden, and that may have been a factor in why AEW won't be filming Dynamite there. 
though that doesn't mean that other factors, including wrestling politics, haven't been a reason that AEW has been kept out of MSG. Back to WWE now and over the holiday season, fans taught two new superstars make their main roster debuts, as Chelsea Green and Deanna Perazzo were called up. Both women were labeled as NXT superstars when they appeared, but that may have changed for Green, who wrestled on main event this week where she defeated Sarah Logan. On commentary, Byron Saxton described the former Impact Knockouts champion as one of the newest additions to our women's division in WWE, making her main event debut this week, implying that Green is here to stay on the main roster. This could be a quiet call-up, or it could be just Byron Saxton doing his own thing on commentary. He didn't say anything about her being from NXT. Given her success in Impact and her work in NXT, it wouldn't be a huge surprise if Green jumps to the main roster, though the WWE Performance Center is full of people with other accolades to their names. Ultimately, this could be a wait-and-see situation, but we'll probably have a really good idea if Chelsea Green continues to appear on WWE television but remains absent from NXT. One woman who remains a part of NXT but might not be there much longer is Io Shirai, as during the latest Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer said that Stardom is prepared to offer both her and Raw's Kairi Sane big money to return to Japan. It was said that Shirai was making more money in Stardom than in WWE, though Meltzer has said that WWE could take actions to stop her from leaving, saying, Io may be moved to the main roster real quick to keep that from happening because then her pay goes way up because her pay in NXT is nothing special. I heard she was making more money with stardom. With Shirai being engaged to New Japan star Evil, the two obviously don't get to see each other very often, and being able to work in the same country could be a factor in influencing Io's decision referring to her future. For now, fans will have to see what her next move is, but Io Shirai seems to have a lot of interest in her services right now. Though losing the Japanese superstar would be a huge blow to NXT, the WWE is always looking for new superstars to join the company, and that includes overseas. At the most recent World Woman Pro Wrestling Diana event in Kanagawa, Ayako Soto won the WWWD world title from Sari, and this main event bout could mark the beginning of the end for the former champion's time in Japan. For years, Sari has been on WWE's radar, and after her loss, she said that she will be leaving the Diana promotion to go to the USA in February. Though she didn't name drop WWE specifically, Sari has previously alluded to the Japanese press that she expects to be involved with WWE sometime in 2020, meaning fans should expect to see the former women's world champion in the coming 12 months. Over to NXT now, and as the Gold brand prepares to host its first live event of the new year, the show has a lot to address before NXT TakeOver Portland on February 16th. This week, the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic will return, as the WWE is allowed to use the Dream's name after Cody granted them permission to carry on with the tournament in his father's honor. Yesterday, WWE announced that in the first round, NXT's Undisputed Era will take on NXT UK's Gallus, and this follows up from the announcement that the Forgotten Sons will face Imperium. The match pitting Wolfgang and Coffee against O'Reilly and Fish is one that fans have been wanting to see for a while, and this first round match could be a match of the year candidate on the first episode of NXT in 2020. We are stepping out of the ring and into Hollywood now, as the Rock's dream to portray DC Comics character Black Adam has finally come to life. Adam, who in the comics rules over the nation of Kandak, is a physical specimen like many comic characters, so it's fortunate that the Brahma Bull is also ripped, much like the DC anti-hero. Recently, the People's Champion uploaded a new post to Instagram which shows him in the gym, training for the upcoming superhero movie. With shooting for the film expected to happen this summer, it's unclear what the Great One has planned until then though fans shouldn't expect to see him in the ring, as the risk of injury derailing the movie's production is too great. And finally, we're going from one wrestling legend to another now, as Hulk Hogan has made it clear that he wants to return to a WWE ring. In the past, Hogan has said he wants to recover from his recent back surgery in time for WrestleMania 36, as he can't live with the fact that his in-ring career technically wrapped up in TNA. This year, Hogan will receive his second WWE Hall of Fame ring for his time in the NWO, and though the image of Hogan working out may be so he looks good for the ceremony, fans and the WWE execs know he's looking for one last match. 
In the image he tweeted out, the Hulkster certainly looks hulked up with a towel over his head and grey beard, though he's back to training way ahead of the doctor's recommendations so he can be ready for WrestleMania. Hopefully Hogan doesn't overdo things by getting back in the gym before his doctor recommended, and with this recent back surgery being the Hulkster's 10th, it seems that Hogan doesn't know best when it comes to keeping his back safe.